Hello, I'm Helen Bradley and welcome to this video tutorial on faster post processing using Adobe Camera Raw from inside Photoshop. Before we get started with this video tutorial, let's look and see what it is that we're going to achieve. I'm going to show you how I would edit an image like this, taking advantage of not only the features that are built into Photoshop, but also the new Adobe Camera Raw filter that you can access from inside Photoshop. So this is the image we're going to start with and this is what we're going to end up with in the image. And we're going to do the lion's share of the fixing in the Adobe Camera Raw filter, but we're also going to use one of Photoshop's tools before we head there. The first thing I'm going to do with this image is to remove this building here. And for that, I'm going to use a Photoshop tool. I'll double click on the background layer and click OK so that the background layer is turned into a regular layer. Then I'm going to choose an appropriate tool and for this the lasso tool is probably the best. I'm just going to make a rough selection around the buildings that I want to remove. It's critical that I select the entire building but it doesn't matter if I take some of the sky with it. Once I've made my selection I'll choose edit and then fill. And from the contents drop down list here I'll select content aware and then just click OK. And we're taking advantage of the Content Aware Fill feature, which allows us to remove that area. And Photoshop will fill it in with some surrounding content. I'll press Control or Command D to deselect the selection. Before we head to the ACR filter, the fact that this statue is on a slight angle is causing me a little bit of stress. So let's go and fix it. In more recent versions of Photoshop, go to the eyedropper tool and just bring out the flyout menu. And what you're looking for is the ruler tool because we can use this to straighten the image. I'm going to draw a line over a line in the image which should be horizontal and of course which is not. So once I've got that line in place, you'll see that on the tool options bar, there's an option for straighten layer. I'm just going to click straighten layer. And the entire image is straightened. Now I'm just going to crop it to get rid of the extra little bits around the image. I may crop this more aggressively later on, but for now I want as much of the image as I can have. And I don't want to crop too much of it off. So having clicked the check mark, we're ready now to head to the new ACR filter. To do this, we'll choose Filter and we want to convert for Smart Filters. So I'm going to click that and then click OK. And next we'll re-choose Filter and choose Camera Raw Filter. This loads the image inside the Camera Raw filter and you'll see that most of the tools that you're familiar with if you've been using Adobe Camera Raw are actually here with the exception of course of that crop tool. So now we're ready to go ahead and fix the image. I'm going to start here in the basic group of options and we'll start by adjusting the white balance. Now you can do that using the temperature and tint sliders or you can grab the white balance tool and then click on something in the image which in real life would have been grey or white or perhaps even black. Now I've just clicked here on this stone because I think that's probably a fair bet for something that should have been grey or white. And I'm getting a slightly more greeny blue colour through the horse. I think that's a pretty good setting so I'll put the white balance tool back. Now we're going to expose. You can see that the image is slightly underexposed. So I'm going to just wind up the exposure a little bit. But I'm also being aware that the rider's face is in a lot of shadow there that I'll need to deal with. Well, I can deal with it using shadows. By opening up the shadows, I can get some of the detail back here. But of course, as soon as you start opening up shadows, the crispness of the image disappears, your contrast goes quite flat. So I want to build some additional contrast back in. With highlights, I want to bring the highlights down because I have a really wonderful sky here that I don't want to lose. And by dragging highlights down or towards the left, I'm darkening the highlights, which is keeping the sky in place. Next, we're going to pick a white and a black point. I'll hold Alt or Option as I click on the white slider here. Now I'm going to drag it to the right because there are no whites yet and I want to drag it until I start seeing some white. So there's an area where it is blowing out in the red channel. Well I just want to back that off. 
until it just disappears, but so that we're close to where it would have been blown out. And then I'll let go the mouse button and then let go the Alt key. So I've got my white point, let's do the same with blacks. You'll hold the Alt or Option key and then click on the black slider. Well, you can see that we've got just a sprinkling of blacks in the image. I'll probably take it down just a little bit. I'm not so worried seeing a little bit of color in the screen at this point when I'm adjusting blacks. I certainly don't want to see it when I'm adjusting whites, but with blacks, just a little bit is good. So I'm gonna let go of that. I can add a bit of clarity, which is a mid-tone contrast adjustment. It's going to make everything look just a little bit more crisp. And I could add vibrance or saturation. Saturation, of course, is going to saturate all the colors in the image. Vibrance will saturate the under-saturated colors. So it has a protection against oversaturating colors. It also has a protection for oversaturating skin tones, not something that we're really concerned about here. If I wanted to, I could use a tone curve adjustment. So I could select, for example, medium contrast or even high contrast here. But I think that it didn't need it, so I'm going to set it back to linear, which is no contrast adjustment at all. I can also sharpen in Adobe Camera Raw. What I like to do is to wind the sharpening up quite high to start off with, and then hold the Alt or Option key as I adjust the radius. Now I'm just seeing where the very fine outlines are appearing in this image. Now this image was shot and it's quite sharp, so I don't need very much of a radius adjustment here at all. So I'm going to keep it quite low. And then for detail, I'm going to do the same thing. Hold the Alt or Option key as I just march the detail slider out until I'm just seeing the right amount of detail in the lines that are on the screen. It's very hard for you to see those, but generally this is a pretty good relationship for radius and detail for an image like this, and particularly one which was shot really in quite sharp focus. Masking is going to be critical here because I don't want to sharpen the sky because I've got nice soft clouds there. So I'm going to hold the Alt or Option key as I drag on the masking slider and I want to get rid of any white in the sky because I don't want to sharpen the sky. And anywhere it's white now is going to be sharpened and that is as it should be. The statue is being sharpened but not those clouds. So I'll just let go of everything. And at this point, if I wanted to, I could just bring the sharpening amount down. Generally, somewhere between about 70 and 80 is a good value for sharpening, particularly if you're masking areas that you don't want to affect. Before we leave here, we're going to have a look at the rider's face, and I'm going to use the radial filter for that. I'll click on the radial filter, and then just drag a small circle onto the image about the size of the area that I want to adjust. Now, if I just make a quick adjustment to this, you'll see that when I bring the exposure down, the inside of the circle is being affected. We just want to check and make sure that we're affecting the correct side of the filter. And if not, we can go ahead and click the other bit. So this would be outside and this is inside. Well, we obviously want inside. But here I want the exposure to be a bit lighter. I want to lighten up that area. But I also will get some value by lightening the shadows. I probably don't want to affect the highlights in this area very much at all, so I might just take them back to zero. I may not want too much of a contrast adjustment. I might be happy with a slight flattening of the color in the image for the price of getting those shadows out. I may want a little bit of extra clarity and I may want some additional saturation. If you're curious, at this point, you can click on the Zoom tool and click over the face to zoom in. If you Alt or Option click, you can zoom back out again. So I'm just looking to see if the effect that I've made with this radial filter, just make sure that it's not obvious where it was made. Let's go back to the radial filter. Let's just target it. And working a little bit closer, I might be able to make even more adjustments. One thing I am concerned about is that the saturation seems to have disappeared a little bit. So I'm just going to wind that up. Now, if that's not enough of an adjustment, I can click New and add a second radial filter. This one is going to be a longer one. 
just going to move it into position here, rotate it around a bit. So I want to see if I can get a little bit in under the warrior's helmet. And again, I'm going to crank up the exposure a little bit and see if opening up the shadows will help that at all. If I'm happy with that, I can zoom back out. I'm just going to click Fit in View. Now we can go ahead and make additional adjustments to the image. For example, we may want to bring down a graduated filter. So I'll grab the graduated filter tool and just bring one down from the top of the image. So in this case, of course, I don't want the exposure to be so high. So I'm just going to zero back out the exposure here and also the contrast and the other settings here. And now I'm going to bring down the exposure a little bit just to darken the top end of the sky and perhaps even soften the contrast a little bit. Deepen the shadows just so I'm getting a little bit more interest in the sky here. And if I'm happy with the image at this point, I'll just click OK. And all the changes that we made to the image have now been applied to the image and we're back in Photoshop. We can continue to work in Photoshop on this image. Of course, if we see things that we want to further adjust, then we can do so. All we need to do is to double click on the Camera Raw filter. That will reopen the image in Adobe Camera Raw with all our settings in place. The graduated filters here, the radial filters here, and we could go ahead and make even further adjustments to the image. It's all fully editable while it remains in layers with the smart filter applied to it in Photoshop. If you're a photographer and if you're looking for a smart and easy way to process photos in Photoshop, I think that using the Adobe Camera Raw filter from inside Photoshop just makes really good sense. It's a whole lot easier to apply the adjustments using that filter than it is to apply individual adjustments to the image using, for example, the settings on the Image Adjustments menu or even applying adjustment layers to the image. This is just a much smarter and much faster way of working with images in Photoshop. Before we finish, let's see how far we've come with processing this image. This is the image we started off with. It's straight out of the camera. It has an unsightly building here and the warrior himself is really quite dark and not really contrasted the way it should be against this really magnificent sky. And let's have a look at the after. Now this didn't take us very long to achieve this result. We were able to remove the unsightly building and do the remainder of the fixes using the Camera Raw filter. So again, here's the before and here's the much more polished after image. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more video tutorials here on my YouTube channel and consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released and visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.